Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Ruben Kigame, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, all these names, once they are mentioned, there is always that specific thing that comes to mind. My name is Richard Okech. You are watching Sitam Church Online Youth Cafe. And today we are going to talk about your one thing. From the names that we've mentioned earlier, there's that specific thing that comes to mind. I don't know about you, but when Bill Gates' name is mentioned, I think about one, Microsoft and computers. And he's also one of the biggest philanthropists we have on earth. When you think about the name Steve Jobs, you think about innovation. Look at how the iPhone has come up. Look at how much it has affected society. Like, iPhone users are considered a totally different breed of people. And one day, Steve Jobs sat and thought, we are going to have phones without buttons. And voila, we had the touchscreen. Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, that is an unending debate that we would not want to get into. But the one thing that comes to your mind when you hear those two names is football and skill and just not ordinary skill, but great skill for that matter. Ruben Kigame, when you hear that name, you think music. He has pioneered gospel music on another level. In this country, we have experienced extremely skilled music productions due to Ruben Kigame's input and the effort that he has put into his craft. There are many other people we can mention here today, and I'm pretty sure there are many more you can think about who inspire certain things in you when you hear their name. One specific thing that you all have to consider is that they have excelled in that one thing that they believe they are good in and have put in the work, the time, and the effort. In the Bible, the book of Proverbs 22, verse 29 tells us that have you seen a person who is skilled in their work they will stand before kings and great men and not stand in the company of obscure people we should all aspire to live up to that specific title a man or a woman who is extremely skilled in what they do at your place of work in your career in your class or in your education system whatever it is that you do with your time, are you working towards ensuring that you are skilled? What measures are you taking to ensure that you are the best at what you do? Specifically, how are you going about it? You might be someone who deals with people. How are you dealing with them such that they will have a lasting impression about you and the interaction they had with you? You might be someone who helps out in different aspects of society. You might be in customer service. You might be someone who teaches young people or children or anyone who engages with people in the course of their lives. You need to understand that the skill set that you have is very, very crucial for you to excel in that one thing that you are good at. You need to be remembered for something. Ask yourself, when this life is over, what is the one thing you want to be remembered for? What is the one thing that will come to people's minds when your name is mentioned? You may not necessarily know what it is that you will be remembered for. You may not even have a clue what you're good at at this point in your life, but you have an opportunity as long as there's a new day. You have an opportunity to discover what it is that God has planned for your life you have an opportunity to practice, to sharpen your skill, hone it, and ensure that you find into flame the gift that the Lord has bestowed upon you, just like Timothy was urged by Paul. It is also important for you to know that there is definitely something that you are good at. You may sit there and think, I feel like other people are better than me. I don't think I have the right qualifications. I didn't really do that well in campus or in high school. The grades I got do not really set me up well compared to my friends or my colleagues or the people I interact with. It is normal to have self-doubt. It is 
very, very normal. And it occurs more often than we would like it to. But you cannot let these feelings of depression and doubt kill your ambitions or define who you are. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. That is one thing that you should understand. I know many people think, yeah, yeah, we hear that all the time. And it's such a cliche amongst Christian circles. But it is true. There is no one out there who is like you. Even identical twins have differences, yet they are what we call identical twins. So it means each and every one of us has a specific gift, a specific talent, a specific calling that is unique to who we are. And we can definitely work on it, sharpen those skills and hone them into prospering other people and working towards their benefit. At the end of the day, the most important thing that you can ever do is make an impact in someone else's life. Change someone else's life for the better. Try as much as possible to start off your day by thinking about others before you think about yourself. And when you have thought about others, think about a specific thing, a specific action that you can practice each and every new day or something that you can work on to ensure that you are being remembered for one thing. You may not understand your purpose in life. You may be thinking, I don't really know. And other people seem to have figured things out, but you're, you, you feel like you're stuck. It is okay to feel stuck. But remember, you have to move. You have to make progress. You have to start somewhere. Start by talking to someone older. I'd advise that you talk to your parents or you talk to relatives who know you really, really well. They can tell you the things that they have seen in you, the gifts that they have uh, noticed in you, and what you can do to become better and better in those skill sets. The other thing you can do is invest time and, where possible, money in bettering yourself. You can read books, and investing in books means buying books, not just borrowing people's books, buying books. Start your own library. Go through books about the specific area that you are interested in or would love to grow in. And obviously the most important book that you can start off with is your Bible. Because from the Bible you will find true identity about who you are and the value that you can add to this life. After that, get books in different sections of life and in different fragments about what you are interested in and what you know you are good at. And after that, put in the work, put in the practice. There is the a thousand hour principle. Many musicians always refer to this with regards to practice. You have to practice, practice, practice. It does not come easy, it does not come overnight, and it is not a miracle. In as much as you are talented, you still have to practice. And for those of you who love Al Alan Iverson, you know the famous words, are we going to sit here and talk about practice? Yes. We need to practice because through that you hone your skills and you become better and better. If it is in your education, go to that course. Think about the school that offers it or the institutions that can help you prosper. If you've already finished your undergrad or you're already doing your master's or you'd like to pursue a professional course, check which institutions will give you the best platform. Think about the people you can interact with who can give you that credibility and ensure that you grow in your one thing. Another thing you can do is invest in a mentor. Look for someone in that specific field that you are interested in and follow them. Think about what you'd like to learn from them. Approach them and tell them, you inspire me or I look up to you in so many different ways and for this specific um, phase in my life, I'd like you to walk with me and guide me and show me how you do this and how you prosper in this or this specific field. It is important for you because you will be job shadowing someone who has already gone ahead of you and that way you can become better through practical experience. Lastly, I draw the example from Jesus in the book of Luke 24 verse 19. When the, the, the two people are walking um, the road to a mouse, it's called. You have someone who does not know that Jesus had been crucified. And he was astonished that these two people were talking about them. And Jesus was walking with them. 
And they were saying, are you the only one who has not been to Jerusalem? Have you not heard about Jesus? A man who was great in his work and his actions. His deeds, his words, and his actions were commendable. Be someone who will always be commended for their deeds and for their words. May your words always enrich other people's lives. May your words always add value. And if that is the case, your deeds will always follow after your words. And you will have a reputation that precedes you everywhere you go. But remember, you have something that you can definitely be remembered for. So today, think about it. What is your one thing? I'm Richard Oketch. You're watching Sitam Church Online Youth Cafe. It is always a pleasure to have each and every one of you tuning in. If you'd like to hear more and learn more from our content, we are available on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter, as well as on YouTube. You can also fellowship with us at any of our Sitam churches countrywide. We'd really love to hear from you. Engage with us, and please let us continue connecting and growing in our faith. Goodbye.